They're back. Remember these guys? Find out why they're hanging out in Whistler again. On today's show, what's your favorite games time memory? For the Olympics, uh, Simon Emon in, in ski jumping really played to the camera. He was amazing to shoot because he had such energy. Then the cogs and wheels behind the Whistler Sliding Center. In any race situation, our biggest goal is just to make sure it's fair for all the competitors. And relive golden moments yet again. This is a very famous signature here. Yes, in this is uh, signed by John Montgomery, who won the um, skeleton, the first gold medal to be awarded in Whistler. Celebrate the one year anniversary of the Games today on the Express. Welcome to the Express on Shaw TV. I'm your host, Nicole Fitzgerald, and I can't believe we're here. The one year anniversary of the 2010 Winter Olympic and Paralympic Games. So grab your pins and your red mittens and head down to the new exhibit here at the Whistler Museum. We're revisiting our favorite Games Time moments. From Smurf outfits to pigloos, or in our next case, 25 days of picture perfect moments. There's photos that remind me of the whole games. Bonnie Makowitz is always on this side of the lens. You may not recognize her face, but chances are the people she photographed at the 2010 Winter Olympic and Paralympic Games are familiar ones. For the Olympics, uh, Simon Emon in, in ski jumping really played to the camera. He was amazing to shoot because he had such energy. So did gold medalist Brian McKeever and gold medalist Lauren Wollstonecroft, all elite athletes, and Bonnie would be their equivalent in the world of news media. This is a uh, pool armband, okay. and uh, usually the pool, uh, pool is used where there's a very limited space. Although silver, this was her hard-earned golden ticket to the front lines of the 2010 Games. Only six agencies wore these badges of honour. This Whistler photographer of two decades was the lone female on the European Photo Press Agency's team of 12 photographers. Pretty much EPA feeds all the newspapers and a lot of magazines in Europe. No one got to see any of my images here, I'm, I'm afraid. Just coming off a weekend of shooting for the New York Times, Bonnie grabbed some quick stock photography at Whistler Celebration Plaza. One year ago, things looked very different. You're looking for little nuances or little gestures or little um, things that, that an athlete will do. Like a blind skier feeling her gold medal for the first time. That one strikes me more because she, she can't see it. I have to uh, uh, wipe my tears. <laughs> Bonnie has no time for feeling on course. She lives in survival mode, juggling composition, focus and light with bib numbers and scoreboards. You really have to keep an eye on the prize, which is the winner. And the, the thing about the Olympics is that winners change. The potential winner changes all the time. I find finish lines really stressful personally. You just gotta breathe and know you're gonna get the shots. And there were many shots filed around the world. One which graced the cover of Germany's largest publication, Stern Magazine. One German photographer said, you know, I've been shooting for 20 years and I've never been in Stern and, and here you are, you Canadian, and, and you don't even know what the magazine is and you get the cover. And so it was, we, we, we laughed about that one, but that was a great day. A great day for Bonnie, and Canada. The 2010 Games showcased Canada's finest, both in front and behind the lens. Bonnie captures the spirit of Whistler best in the book Top of the Pass. It's available at Armchair Books in Whistler. Sea to Sky athletes signed autographed photos of themselves to be put on display here at the Whistler Museum. There's even a signed beer jug by none other than John Montgomery, our gold medalist and skeleton. The Whistler Sliding Center had some great Canadian moments. Reporter Alana Ponsby discovers what makes it tick. Wow, 
once the race surface is done and the athletes are putting down their personal best times, it's pretty rewarding. Rewarding because for Rob and his maintenance crew, it's their job to keep this track the fastest in the world. It's a physical job for sure. If you think about it in cyclical fashion, by the time we get to the bottom, you've got to start at the top again. This track requires constant maintenance day in, day out from first thing in the morning till end of night. It's kind of like uh, road work in a way. So we're constantly filling in all the potholes and smoothing out any of the lumps, humps, bumps. Using brooms, shovels and these scrapers, the guys sculpt and shape the ice to make it as smooth and shiny as possible. The smoother we keep the track, the, the less damage the sleds do to it. We've got different scrapers for different corners. Every corner on the track has a different profile, so there's a lot of artistry and as much as there is labour involved in it. This particular corner was uh, given some what we call slush and we can throw that up on the walls and it will stick and freeze. Um, it allows us to re-change the shape of the ice. Besides just preparing the ice surface, safety of the ice surface is paramount. If a luge or a skeleton athlete comes off their sled, all they have is their skin tight uniform on their, their skin suit. And if the ice is really rough, they'll get burns and, and cuts a lot easier. And the track not only needs to be kept smooth for safety and speed, but consistently cool as well. The mock-up there, you can see the pipes that run through it. That's where the refrigerant runs. And that's what draws the heat out of the concrete and is probably the most efficient way for us to maintain the ice in a setting where we're outdoors like this. Yeah. Yeah. Rain, snow or shine, it's certainly a labour of love for these guys who work hard all year round to keep all 1,450 metres of track in top racing condition. Normally on a day-to-day -day basis we have seven to eight people working on the track on a given day. You have to pay constant attention to the ice because of changing weather conditions. Any race situation, our biggest goal is just to make sure it's fair for all the competitors from the first starter to the last starter. Track side at the Whistler Sliding Centre, I'm Milana Ponsonby for The Express. The Whistler Sliding Centre, a $105 million legacy, so get out and enjoy it. Cheer on your local athletes at the Youth Canadian Championships on February 24th at the Whistler Sliding Centre. Admission is by donation. The Whistler Museum has gotten Olympicized, so come on out and get blue. The 21st Olympic Winter Games in 2010 are awarded to the city of Vancouver. The games are coming back to Canada. Well, one of the coolest things in our new exhibit is that you can come in and hold one of the Olympic torches and take your picture with it and wear some fake medals and pretend you're actually there. As well, you can put on one of the Smurf uniforms so you can be a volunteer for a day. I love the incredible artwork on this helmet. Yeah, it's really cool. And on the other side, it has a, a drawing of Black Tusk on it. So it's really a Whistler helmet for one of our Olympians. It's pretty cool. The heart of this exhibit is to celebrate the biggest thing that ever hit Whistler, the best party that was ever thrown for two weeks, and how successful it was, and the energy in the village, and our Sea to Sky Olympians who made us all so proud, and just to really highlight a magic moment in Whistler's history. Oh, have we got the bid books? Yeah, and one was signed by Jean Chrétien. And this is a very famous signature here. Yes, in this is uh, signed by John Montgomery, who won um, Skeleton, the first gold medal to be awarded in Whistler. Of course, he did his famous uh, stroll through the village, drinking his beer and trying to auction it off. So uh, we got him to sign one for us. We have some artifacts donated by our Sea to Sky Olympians, including Julia Murray's torch-bearing uniform, Britt and Michael Janik's, um, some of their equipment, including Michael Janik's uh, custom-made helmet that has a drawing of the first Whistler gondola on it. Uniform from Mile Wrecker. We have a Paralympic cauldron and torch. So there's some really cool things here. Along with pin trading, my favorite moment was definitely the Paralympics. It really was Whistler's Games. It was incredible to cheer on so many locals. Still to come, why was this year's World Cup season cut short for Paralympian Morgan Perrin? No matter what you do, you're going to end up crashing at some point or losing an edge or something. And what used to be the home of Olympic speed skaters is now the stomping ground for recreationalists. The 
2011 Canadian Direct Insurance BC Men's Curling Championship is live on Shaw. The best men's curlers of BC are set to battle it out in Vernon with a spot in the Nationals on the line. Tune in Saturday, February 12th at 7.30 p.m. Pacific for the semifinal and on Sunday, February 13th at 3 p.m. Pacific for the final to see the best of BC battle it out for the provincial crown. We're there to bring it home. Shaw TV, your local voice. The roots of the Legion run deep in the community. Legionnaires support a myriad of causes and come to the rescue in times of need. For nearly a century, they've been an invaluable friend and partner in the Canadian family. Why not add your voice to the community? Be part of the Legion. It's where belonging matters. Welcome back to the Whistler Museum. I'm your host, Nicole Fitzgerald, and you're watching The Express. Whistler was literally born for the games. For some, it was the culmination of nearly half a decade of dreams and hard work. For others, it was a stepping stone, and hopefully an experience that will bring our next athlete to a podium in 2014 Russia. No matter what you do, you're going to end up crashing at some point or losing an edge or something. There's no such thing as a perfect skier. You didn't tweak your knee at all on your crash? Team physiotherapist oh Alex Fell works on Canadian para-alpine ski team member yeah. Morgan <laughs> Perrin. Basically. Today with Morgan we're worried about some of the compensatory changes that are going on in his right leg here. The 2010 Paralympian recently fractured his foot after crashing during training runs at the IPC That's World funny. Championships in nice. Italy last month. I got like five more weeks or so until I can wait there and then a month or two of rehab and such until I can ski after that. It's the end of the World Cup circuit for Morgan, disappointingly so, after being hot on the heels of his best season ever. The first races we had in Norams, they went really well for me. I had two silver places in the GS. I had my best World Cup finish to date this year, a fifth place in uh, Giant Slalom. Injured, Morgan is left to work hard to keep himself in shape at the Whistler Athlete Center, his former stomping ground for the 2010 Winter Paralympics. This gym has got to be the pimpest gym I've ever been to for sure. It's nice to have all the extra space, it's nice to have the fantastic equipment and all the staff are super helpful as well. Morgan has his sights set on the 2014 Games in Sochi, Russia. His 14th place finish in the standing men's downhill at the 2010 Games may have been a personal disappointment, but the experience only left him wiser. I was, I think, over amped, I guess you could say, kind of, I think that would kind of plagued our whole Alpine Canada as a whole. Not often we have people even staying in the finish and all of a sudden there's 5,000 people staying in the finish. It was really big experience and way different from that that we experienced in the World Cup. Instead of a medal, Morgan took home a different kind of gold. My brother hadn't seen me race very much at all prior to that and I finished the downhill. I, I aired over hot air at the bottom and came to the finish and I looked up and he's, he was there with one of my old Alpine Canada jackets and he came up and gave me a big hug and he said that was cool and I thought that was the best part of the whole games for sure and hopefully great memories such as these will power this dedicated athlete through the ups and downs of his Paralympic pursuit. From Whistler, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald for Shaw TV. Morgan also had the chance to check out the adaptive rowing erg at the Whistler Athlete Centre. The Olympics and Paralympics have come and gone. It almost feels like they didn't happen. But our legacies are great reminders. 